I'm Nick Longworth, a senior robotics engineer with SICK. This is part of a series of short videos focusing on the key challenges in bin picking applications when using SICK's PLB product. PLB is SICK's state-of-the-art 3D bin picking software with many algorithms and 3D camera types to choose from to solve all bin picking applications. Be sure to check out the rest of our videos. Today, we're going to be looking at an M8 35 millimeter long uh, bolt using our surface algorithm. The surface algorithm is our CAD matching algorithm. Uh, if you see on my screen here, uh, I've already brought in the CAD model and I've worked on setting this up. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the key challenges to making this type of application work. So like I said, first thing, you bring in this, uh, this CAD model, it's going to be step or I just file. Uh, first thing I did here is I made this class revolving. What that does is it tells PLB that this part can revolve around an axis and it really doesn't matter which way it sees it everything's going to be up. So if you see this part, it's fully symmetric around this axis. It really doesn't matter if up is look, looking at this way or up is looking at that way. Um, that gives me more pick locations and gives PLB a little bit more data about that part. I can go ahead and set that here as well. So my, rev, my revolution axis is now my x-axis. That's this red axis here. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to look at my localization. So I have a, a whole bin full of these little things. So my result order, uh, when I go into PLB, I'm going to be doing a localization first, then I look at an overlap, and then I look at uh, pick poses. So when I'm doing this result order, is the result order for my localizations. I've set that to scanned surface. My scanned surface basically means that I'm going to choose the localization that I see the most of the part on. That way I'm not looking at localizations where I might may just see the, the top of the hex or I might see just part of it. I'm looking for everything of that part. So I'm looking for the parts that are, are the most open to being picked, basically. Um, but there are several other ways of setting that. The other thing I'm setting here is image data quality. So my image data quality has to do with how much PLB is going to fill in data for me. So the camera is going to take an image, and that image may have some holes in it, um, and that's due to occlusions a lot of the time, so parts that are blocking the camera from seeing a part behind it. By setting this to minus 50 instead of the, the default that's minus 25, I'm basically allowing PLB to grow those regions and kind of fill in data where it sees fit. Um, it's very important for a part this small. So next thing I'm going to do here, I bring in my, my CAD, my gripper. It's already here. Um, but here's another big feature within PLB that's going to help me solve this application. If you see this shadowing, that's my dynamic rotational pick poses. Uh, what that means is when I have this turned off, PLB is going to use this specific point um, So on, this, uh, on the threads here. If I turn this on, PLB is now allowed to decide for me where in this, these angles to pick this part up. So based on my collision settings, because so I'm going to avoid collisions with this system, um, PLB is going to pick the best one that, to, uh, to pick up this part that's going to avoid collisions the best. This gives me more pick poses. It gives me a better opportunity to clear this bin. So if you see, I have seven different pick poses here. Um, some of them are tilted like this. Others are on the hex here, but they're all tilted. The idea here is I'm trying to clear the bin, and the more pick poses I give PLB to solve the bin with, the better off I'm going to be. So it's a, it's a game between your tooling and the ability to localize. We're, we're able to localize the whole bin, but can your tooling actually get to all these different parts if they're down in a corner? This is a very important feature, this dynamic rotational pick poses, to be able to do that easily instead of having to define these yourself. Um, last, again, collision settings, these are all set. I have different ones for different pick poses. That's helpful for me. So um, that is the gist of it. Today we are using the X36 camera. Um, that is our high resolution camera. Uh, we're able to get a very nice image with this. If I turn on our color mapping, that's going to give you a much bigger idea of how nice this image actually is. Give me one second here. So you can see these these parts are for such a small part you can really see the detail in them. So our X36 camera is very good for these small parts. We do have, you see, other cameras that work with this software, the scanning ruler and the Visionary S. Uh, there's some other videos on those ones. 
So I'm using a UR robot today. Um, I'm all set up. I'm just going to get this ready to go. So it's going to kick in the run mode for me. You can see it takes some pictures here. I'll go ahead and get our view set up. And the robot's going to start picking here. Like I said, it's going to pick on whatever angle it, it feels is best for its collision settings. And I'm also using zones here. This is the other thing that is really helping this application. With PLB, I'm able to split this bin up into a number of zones. Um, those zones allow me to use one image to capture multiple parts. So in this case, I have it set up into two zones. You'll see this zone here. And you'll see on this next localization, I'm using the left zone. Um, you can set this to up to 16 different zones. The general idea here, though, is that you're picking where you know parts have not moved. So if I'm using one image, I need to be certain, or at least relatively certain, that the parts within that zone have not moved due to me picking from the other zones. Um, so I could probably split this bin up into four zones, but I probably wouldn't want to go much more than that. Uh, it's very possible for the robot to disturb the parts in, in the zones. If I were to go to, say, nine zones, that could be an issue. So this robot will go for about 100 parts, and then it'll stop. Um, but this is, uh, this is how we solve bolt picking. Uh, if you see a, a big piece of this, uh, this application here, though, comes back to this tooling. Um, your tooling has to match what you're doing here. If it doesn't, it's either going to generate too much collision or it's going to not be able to pick anything because there will be too much space around it that is not open. So it will be collision either way. Um, if you see, these are just about the right size. There's not too much opening here. And they're also very thin at the tip. That way I can kind of poke into the pile and be able to grab the part I'm looking for here. You got to be able to get into that that pile of parts in order for this to work. You see we do have the accuracy here to be able to grab on the hex. Uh, you'll see that on this next part here. You can get right on that hex. So with that, um, I hope everybody has enjoyed this uh, quick PLB demonstration. Uh, we have started the what we are calling the PLB challenge. Uh, if you would like to challenge PLB and have your product featured in one of our videos here, uh, if you would like more information, please contact the information on your screen. Have a great day.